Hello everybody and welcome back to more Let's Play Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom. This is Nintendo Mac 10 here. Um, this, uh, the beginning of this episode is going to be post-commentary because <clears throat> I was, I wasn't happy with the commentary for the beginning of this video that I already did when I was recording the video. So, and I'm also sick, so bear with me for a sec. But anyway, let's start this, uh, second boss. doesn't seem to be getting any better. SpongeBob, hurry! Squidward's in more trouble than a chili riano in a pan of grease. We have to help! You're right, Sandy. But if that robot really is like Patrick, he'll eat us for dessert! What should we do? Well, we better figure something out, and pronto! Maybe that button on his back is a self-destruct. I'll try to hit it. Good idea, SpongeBob. But it's time to stop yapping and get to it! Yikes. Okay, um, well, what you do in this boss battle is you dodge Patrick's ac acidic attacks. He has an acid ice cream cone for some reason. Um, and he spins around in circles, and, um, he spray tries to spray you with acid in, like, an X formation, so if you just stay in between the lines, you'll probably dodge it. Then... Yeah, when he gets dizzy, he falls over and you hit the button on his back. Um, when I was younger, this boss freaked me out for some reason. I mean, with the combination of the Yuri ominous music that is actually really cool. Um, and the, just, he looks kind of creepy and angry and sinister and, um, you know, just the, that combination kind of freaked me out a little bit. That was really weird when I was little. <laughs> if you, you know, couldn't tell by my little stories, and I'll have another one later. Um. <coughs> sorry about that. Oh, I hope that's not too loud. I'll turn it down if it is. Um. Anyway. Uh, if you haven't noticed, there are the Texas, um, things that you swing on when you're Sandy. You'll obviously have to use that when you're, you know, doing that. Anyway, next portion of the boss with Sandy. That does it. You pushed this world too far. Get ready for a hot fudge twister, Texas style. What is Sandy going to okay, do to get so... on Frozen? What you're gonna want to do if you're sand, or when you're Sandy, um, you want to go around on those things, making those boxes fall. Um, while he's spinning around, he can run into the boxes and break them. But uh, basically, you want to stand on them when you're hitting him. Not necessarily for the first part, but see what he does is he. Uh, drops some acid into the ring and he keeps making the acid levels drop so and also this attack is really weird he's like breathing acid which is really disgusting and trying to Ew. <laughs> that was a close one anyway so I have to bring these down to I uh, get him to go uh, to have a platform to stand on when he gets dizzy and um, also he I got mm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> oh gosh, let's get away from that. I agree. It's getting really close. Ah, okay. And yeah, when he spins and does stuff, he can destroy these uh, crates, so be careful of that. <laughs> so what I suggest and what I've done for as long as I've uh, played this game was just kind of go around as Sandy doing this. It's easy to uh, avoid attacks like this. And final hit. It's time to roll out some robot punishment. 
Anyway, it's happened before. Oh, he tries to freeze you and then spit that out, which would actually bring you back. But, um, anyway, what you gotta do now is just wait around, and then you gotta use the uh, bubble bowl to hit him. And on these conveyor belts is kind of hard. But anyway, um, it's happened before where I accidentally uh, fell in before, or with Sandy, uh, before <coughs> it actually went to the cutscene and died and had to restart that portion of the fight. Here, I could get hit with that attack really quick next time, just to show, you, show it off, because it's, you know, it's kind of cool, I guess, I don't really know. Let's hope that he can stop on this side. Okay. Nope. Okay, I gotta restart this part. No big deal. Um, well, I don't really need to watch this again. <laughs> yeah, let's... That's how that works. Okay, we're not gonna do that again. Now I'm gonna actually try to, uh, attack him. Being in a corner like this, I don't really know why, but it, it feels like it, it it's made easier. And I'm missing. And... Oh! I see a prime bowling moment right here! I don't know why it's not working. There we go! I can't believe how long it took for him to actually come back. Let's... Oh, are you kidding me? Whoa. Did I get a hit? I don't even think I actually got hurt. Because the freezing itself doesn't actually hurt you. But, like, I fell in the, uh, the acid. Oh, are you kidding me? All the way over there. Are you, uh, are you kidding me? Oh, I don't need to do this again. Okay. I usually always go around this way just because, for one, most of the conveyor belts go that way, and also, I don't know, usually I go from left to right a lot just because, I don't know, maybe it's just the way I write and it's kind of an OCD thing. A lot of things like that have to do with OCD, but, um, considering I'm, I write that way, maybe that's why, I don't know, I'm a weird person. Ask anybody that knows me. <laughs> and that side of the uh, spray is trying to get me. So let's try to avoid it. And all the way over there. <laughs> this shouldn't be too hard. Oh, ah, gosh, I thought it was going to take me to the other side. There we go. Okay. Hurry up. Hurry up. And I got hit. Ah, hurry up and hit me. There we go. Okay. Get the underwear and continue on. Okay. Okay. Well, that seems easy enough. He's all the way over there. There. <laughs> Shouldn't be too hard. There we go. Finished. That also freaked me out a little bit. Thanks for saving me, guys. I never thought I'd say this, SpongeBob, but I owe you big time. Thanks, Sandy. We'd still be popsicles if it wasn't for her. Aw, shucks. You fellers are gonna make me blush. I think I have fudge in my pants. Yeah, that also used to weird me out when I was little. <laughs> okay, anyway, I'm um, cutting again. Oh, after, oh, after the uh, 
boss fights, it does that cool stuff. I'm sorry, Clanton. <laughs> the Chum Bucket Lab is locked up tight. I don't know if I'll ever get enough golden spatulas to get in. Yes, it's the Chum Bucket security system. I designed it myself. It makes me so proud. It was meant to keep out the hateful throngs of the unwashed. <laughs> Unfortunately, I never figured I'd be on this side. <laughs> so what are you going to do, Plankton? We, of course, meaning you, we're going to have to go out there and get those golden spatulas. Or I'll never get back into the chum bucket and regain control of my robots. What was that? Oh, uh, I said, will I ever get back into the chum bucket to stain all my pots? What the heck? Yes. Plankton, what are you smoking? Mm, something's fishy here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, usually in the ocean things are fishy. I mean, I guess that just kind of comes with the territory, but, um, oh, there was another shiny object down here, okay. Um, hmm. but we got a new ability. The fight took me ten minutes, jeez louise. I guess it's really not that much, but still. Hmm. 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 Anyway, we got the, uh, final unlockable ability, which is the cruise bubble. There it is. It's, uh... L1, I guess. Uh, what am I gonna hit? Hit it! Hit it! Ah, oh, I missed. Okay, whatever. <laughs> anyway, this is the only attack that can destroy the stone tiki's. So, yeah. Fun fact, I guess. Um, here, let's talk to Mr. Krabs. What's wrong, Mr. Krabs? You don't look so good. You gotta help me, boy. The Krusty Krab's been overrun by a bunch of them hoodlum robots of yours. They've booted me out! And worse! They've got all me beautiful shiny objects! Defiling the Krusty Krab? Is there no end to their evil? What are we- oh, Sorry. We, meaning you, are going to clear the robots out, get me back me restaurant, mm. and most importantly, rescue me money! Mm, I guess I kind of got a little trigger. I really wish I didn't do that. I really, ugh, that really bugs me. Hmm. Anyway, hmm. um, oops. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, so let's just go around, collect some more shiny objects. Let's talk to him because he's gonna talk about the cruise bubble. Bubble buddy, I bet the next move you teach me will be the best. Thanks, SpongeBob. Those teleportation powers. I wish he could use that in other ways, but whatever. Absolutely, SpongeBob. Super Pinky shake on it. I would if I had pinkies. Here, I'll blow you some. Yeah, maybe later. Now, pay attention, SpongeBob. This bubble's a doozy. Paying my entire salary in attention. <laughs> when you're not moving, press this button, and you'll blow a bubble that you can steer as it flies through the air. Wow! Aim carefully, though. You've mm. only got a few seconds of flight time before the bubble pops. I'm a bubble blowing machine. Yeah, you are, SpongeBob. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so, I guess I'll go into the uh, chum bucket really quick. Actually, first, I'll get that one golden spatula that, you know, you get from the there are three, um, oh, oops, there are three buttons right here. And, uh, you gotta hit them all. I mean, it seems pretty self-explanatory. I mean, what do you do with buttons? You hit them until there's no more to hit. Or, I mean, press, I guess, really. Anyway... Um, let's jump up to the, uh, roof of the chum bucket. In this case, first, you are, uh, uh, f the first thing that's available is the, um, golden spatula. So, I have 14,900. That is a pretty cool number. Just a hundred more, and I'll have exactly 1,500. Anyway, <laughs> math. Um... Anyway, there is a little jump over there to the last pair of underwear. And I made it. Wow, six pairs of underwear. I am one unbeatable sponge. You are, SpongeBob. And you are also kind of weird for wearing six pairs of underwear. 
that probably it would be uncomfortable, I think. Um, but I guess that's just me. Anyway, so it looks like I've gotten about everything. Um, oh, I didn't tell you that story I was going to tell you earlier. I guess I can tell you the story while I go get uh, the golden spatula in the chum bucket. Um, this is like, what I, I, when I was younger, I had a lot of irrational fears. And one of them being uh, Chuck E. Cheese. Whenever we went to Chuck E. Cheese, he, and he like, you know, walked out to, uh, you know, say hi to all the the kids. Oh, I, I could have gotten those uh, things right there, but I guess I kind of missed. Anyway. Oh. Hold on. Authorities have confirmed that the robots running amok through Bikini Bottom are indeed coming from the Chum Bucket. Yes, right where you're standing. Plankton, owner of the Chum Bucket, and best known for the creation of robots whose sole purpose is to cause mayhem and destruction, has denied any involvement. <laughs> and then stomp on your children! And stomp on your children's children! <laughs> what the heck? This has been a Bikini Bottom <laughs> news flash. Okay. Mm. They, serve food here, yes. they don't serve they love. Don't serve anyway, love. this might not be a very well-known golden spatula. I gotta do is jump up here mm. and wall jump, but you can see the shadow. Anyway, but yeah, whenever Chuck E. Cheese actually like came out of his little like <laughs> his little uh, cave in the walls, and like they showed it on the screens or whatever. <laughs> It freaked me out. I thought he was gonna come and kill me or something by giving me a hug. I literally ran away from him whenever I, uh, you know, and I was little. I remember, and this is a memory thing. This isn't just, you know, I could picture this in my mind and I think, you know, no, this is, I totally remember being scared of him. Anyway, this is kind of a hard little thing that used to give me trouble when I was younger. Anyway. But I, I always remember I was so little, those little walls everywhere in between um, those little areas where you eat the pizza. Um, they were so they were just towering over me and and I was like hiding and running away from <laughs> from him. <laughs> Cause he, he made me un uncomfortable. He really did. Okay, anyway, this is going to be kind of extreme. Ow, that was rude. Looks like I got him. Oh, these little snots are really annoying. Hmm. Basically, what you're wanna gonna gonna wanna do is take that out ASAP, and then just go for these little freak bags. Ow. Then, those things were in my way. I do not appreciate it. Just go up there. And there you go. The thing is, when I was younger, I didn't really think about using... Because the... the the cruise bubble was so new to me, I never really thought about using it. <laughs> so yeah, I went the hard way and actually tried to get up there to destroy it myself. <laughs> and I died a few times. And it was kind of unpleasant and I fell. Um, I guess I <clears throat> I guess I could go back up there. Really quick to get everything. <laughs> But anyway, uh, that's all you really gotta do. Mm. This used to be hard for me, mm. and I did not like it very much. But now it's really kind of easy, actually. Mm. <laughs> so I'm gonna walk out and get my reward for Mr. Krabs. And then if I walk back in there, which I could do really quick, I guess, um, you know, there's gonna be people, and it's gonna be all great. So. Phew! You had me worried there for a bit, boy. Worried for me money, of course. Oh, thanks. Here, 
Take this as your reward. Sorry, I thought I skipped his dialogue. <laughs> oh gosh, that that made me a little scared. <laughs> okay, never mind. Um. Well. <clears throat> yeah, let's walk in there really quick. Anyway, there's no reason for me to be in here at the moment. Because I've done everything I can slash want to do right now. <laughs> anyway, here's a, a cool mime guy that I always thought was kind of funny. I think Patrick goes over to the tree dome after you've completed that part. I could walk over in there. Yeah, I might as well just kind of kill some time before I go to the next level. I probably don't have enough time. I uh, time, uh, think enough stuff to do before that. But you know, I'll take a look around. No big deal. And the uh, sponge balls are everywhere, so it's gonna be easy to um, get around quicker, quickly, or more quickly. I don't know. Anyway. So yeah, Cindy Street Home is better. I think Patrick actually is over here. He's like, when in doubt, pinky out. <laughs> I love when they reference the episodes. Anyway, that's all that she wrote for this part. Anyway, not this like episode or anything, but um, you know, I'm just kind of talking. Anyway, <laughs> so. Let's. Might as well use this to go over here. Oh, well, that was rude. Bubble Buddy was in my way. Um, that movie theater over there. Um, what that is, is you, um. Wait, the, wait let me read that. Revenge of the Bride of Plankton's. Other brain? I never read that. <laughs> that is actually kind of weird. Anyway, when you get 40,000 uh, of those shiny objects, you can go in there. But all it is is um, uh, artwork and con concept art. And, I mean, it's not a big deal, but I probably will... Um, grind these things, uh, these shiny objects, and uh, get that to show it off. Anyway, right now I'm going to go into the kelp forest because I guess I have time. This is probably one of my least, th this is definitely one of my least favorite levels, but it's still kind of cool. <laughs> also, the level freaked me out too. How the, uh, like the idea of being lost in the forest when I was little, like, really weirded me out and freaked me out. And then, like, Squidward went crazy. Oh, whatever. They had the magic con show, though. Here we are hmm. in the kelp forest. An interesting area with many sights to see. For those that don't get hopelessly lost first. <laughs> but, I mean, I kind of like the level design a little bit. Oh, here's a new enemy. That's actually kind of obnoxious when paired with other enemies. Hmm. See, this guy thinks he knows what he's up. Or, no, what's up. Whatever, you know what I'm saying. Anyway that happens and they start to laugh at you and then you die and then they get crushed by uh, a cliff I guess anyway but yeah this level's cool and all but it it is kind of obnoxious the thing that really sucked about this level the first time I tried to play this really oh by the way that thing slaps you and this it's pretty rude but you know there's nothing you can really do about it except for avoid it but, uh, by the way, there's these are new things. There's just bouncy leaves and such. But the thing is, it's so dark, and you got to make sure your brightness is really high so you can actually see it. But, yeah, that used to stump me a lot. Um, anyway. So, I guess I can just kind of look around a little bit. And then the episode is almost done, so it's going to end. Plus, there's just kind of like a lot of stuff in all these little nooks and crannies. And, um, you know. Oh, gosh, these guys. That kind of scared me a little bit, because I was not really 
I didn't really see it coming. Another thing is the collectibles in this level. That's how you want to deal with those guys, by the way. Hmm. The collectibles in these level, well, I guess we'll just have to find out what they are. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, let's just head over to uh, where Mrs. Puff is, so she can tell us about that. Hmm. There's another port of hero, by the way, which is kind of fun. Hmm. And let's get that box. Hi, Mrs. Puff. Hmm. Driving class isn't out here today, is it? Uh... Hmm. No, SpongeBob. Why, why do you say that? Do you think we'd have class out here just to hide from you? <laughs> How silly. I'm just uh, gathering twigs for the winter. Yes, that's it. Oh, can I help? I have a merit badge in twig gathering. Actually, you can help with something else. These robots showed up and scared all the students, I mean, uh, campers, off into the forest. Before the ranger arrives, someone needs to go out and find them. Well, I kind of sk skipped that a little bit. I'll help you find them, Mrs. Pop. I'm the sponge for the job. Thanks, SpongeBob. Mm. I'll make sure to give you a nice reward when you found all of them. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's the uh, collectibles. Are these children mm. that are totally not Mrs. Puff's um, mm. boating school students? Mm. Uh, and. You know, finding them isn't that hard, because I kind of have a good idea of where they are. Like I said, I haven't played this game in a while, but, you know, they're not really that hard to find. But, anyway. I'm trying to look around, make sure I haven't missed anything, like any uh, shiny objects or whatever. But anyway, this episode is actually done for now. So, uh, I want to thank you guys for watching this episode, and I will see you guys next time when we venture into the kelp forest. See ya.